The current talk is uh, no code platform powered by Python and Django, which will be presented by speaker Bhagwan Komari. Bhagwan is founder of Architect Corner, and I request Bhagwan to take uh, the stage. Hi, uh, this is Bhagwan Kumadi, and um, today I'm going to talk about um, the no code platform. So I'm just going to share the screen. Um, So I'm currently working as the director of product engineering with Value Momentum, and um, I have worked on various uh, platforms, technology stacks. So the latest, uh, my passion is more interested in Python and uh, Zango. And uh, back in uh, my college days, I used to work on various uh, functional languages. And at that point, uh, we used to have <coughs> very old languages based on um, what you call before C, C++, Java and the tickle tk right and there were a couple of others which were uh, very famous for ai at that time right and uh, so it's a very uh, pleasant coincidence that i'm currently working on function programming uh, not just object oriented at that point i was working c also the other aspect is the django part and the no code platform i, I hope you're all familiar so let's uh, get into the presentation so that uh, we can get into the actual uh, <coughs> topic so no code platforms are very famous and current focus in this presentation is more on the healthcare and insurance but in general the no code platforms are shaping the future for enterprise the first question is okay i'm a python developer what's in it for me why should i worry about uh, <coughs> no code platforms right? and um, <coughs> excuse me similarly a mind map for presenting what are the, about the no code platforms and why no code platforms and presenting in healthcare, insurance, what are the challenges, and a small demo, and who else do is doing this, and what's next. So the immediate question you have saying, Bhagwan, great, maybe they may be shaping the enterprise. Um, but tell me, what is in it for me? Why should I care as a Python developer? Right? So most of the time, you have this dream. Right? Can I have a low-code platform or a code generated and uh, deploy and upgrade my application on fly. And if you're an insurance company and an insurer, can I create new insurance policies for customers without code? Right? If you're a doctor, can I provide technical support without any code? Can I have applications created to, to make my job easy? <gasps> Might be the uh, staff in the hospital or in a pharmacy <gasps> or in an insurance company. Pharmacy, right? Can I create online pharmacy catalog updates and push them to the customers? Can I create applications on the no-code platform, the dream of a business analyst, without even thinking of any code, any technology, any technology stack, right? Now, I'm going to use this mind map across the presentation so that you have keep in mind. So you have on the right-hand side, no-code platforms and low-code platforms, right? And you have on the left-hand side, domain-specific things. So very common thing, domain independent things, are you have an application, you have resources, you have market requirements, you have data sources, you have customizations, you have legacy systems and migrations and applications, goes through upgrades and updates, and you have in-house applications also, not just uh, uh, applications which are for uh, customers. And there are low-code platforms, which are uh, code generators, right? And uh, you, the others are based on AI, neural, neural sketch. Like any other IT project, right? No-code platforms require licensing, subscription, budget, right? And it is based on a tech stack. Training is needed. It has metadata. It involves DevOps to refer deployment, right? On the domain-specific side, you can get into insurance, home insurance, travel, health insurance, auto insurance, healthcare, wellness apps, telehealth, digital health, right? and payment processing, which is common across insurance and healthcare. <clears throat> now, question is why? Why no code platforms? So lower barrier to entry, deployment cost is low, shorter development cycles, reduced maintenance burden, enhanced customer experience, integration of legacy systems, improved productivity, right? and uh, strong built-in governance, rapid prototyping, and software development, democratization. So let's say you want to develop this for insurance. 
right? What do, what do you do on no code platforms? You focus on underwriting process, claims processing, insurance code, customer buying an insurance policy, customer onboarding, adjustments, renewals, product lifecycle management, and dynamic case management. So according to the survey, 65% of applications will be created with low code tools by 2024. And the market cap is estimated to rise over 21 billion by 2022 March. In healthcare, the same thing, similar functionality, but focusing on healthcare specific domain like patient safety, quality monitoring, monitoring, patient discharge, electronic medical records management, medicine management, and appointment schedule. On the pharma front, you have compliance, audit, pharmacist, network communication, digitization of research, direct traceability, and medical supply chain management. Now, Many of my customers, uh, when they take a look at this presentation, say that Bhagwan is very, it's really well, well structured. You have a mind map. You have what's in it for me, and talked about examples, the processes for the local uh, no code platforms. But can you tell me what are the challenges? What are the obstacles? What are the issues? Right? First thing is the maintainability, which we are going to talk about, is regarding the upgrade, upgrades and challenges, and in terms of maintenance, in terms of new technology stacks which are coming in. Right, and also upgradability, performance. Right, when a new technology stack or a new UI framework comes in, now currently, let's say, the no-code platform has the ability to build Angular JS, right? But suddenly, the customer says, Bhagavan, no, 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 no. We, um, the latest I heard is React is React and Vue.js are the power, very, for, very for popular. And I don't like Angular. I want to have this no-code platform make, uh, build, the Ang uh, build the React application. Next customer says, no, 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 Vue.js is really Great, I want to build a new.js. The latest customer, which I heard, right, he's saying, no, no, I don't, I don't want to focus on UI frameworks. I want to focus on multi-experience development platform. I want a multi-experience platform, a no-code platform, which worries about different experiences, not just UIX and not just JavaScript frameworks. I want to have conversational experience. I want immersion experience. I want different, uh, what you call IVR based, SMS based, or uh, social media, WhatsApp based. I don't want to just get locked on Angular or React or Vue.js. I want to be independent of channel. I want to co-focus on Amni channel. Right? So that, those are some of the challenges on the maintainability and also upgradability. How do you go about upgrading? Let's say you have a technology stack which is fixed, but there are versions, there are changes, there are new features coming in with the same technology stack. You need to worry about all those upgradability and provide those features within the no-code platform. Similarly, performance. Can I deploy this application for 1,000? Users in insurance, let's say a thousand clinics, a thousand doctors. But tomorrow, another customer says, and I have 10,000 doctors across India. Can I deploy this for 10,000 doctors? Will the application work on the cloud? Right? So, those are some of the performance related challenges which you need to focus on. And also, security, right? Will my data, is my data secure? Right? It does it, uh, like if it is healthcare, HIPAA, is the HIPAA uh, compliance. Uh, what you call does the application um, conform by HIPAA, HIPAA insurance, HIPAA compliance? Similarly, data security, PCI DSS, right? Information data, information security standards, and scalability. Right? I want to take this from one continent to another continent, new geography, right? It, it's not just adding more, uh, uh, creating a new instance, or it is multi-tenant adding more tenants. But also, you need to focus on the geography specific taxation, geography specific culture, internationalization, localization. There are many things which come up when you want to scale across multiple continents, multiple geographies. And some of the, some of the countries like Europe and North America will have compliance standards, regulations, even so simple things like pharmacy. But to take off in India, right? We had to go through even pandemic. I think the government was really tough against the pharmacy. Only in some of the cases when there was lockdown, they allowed them to deliver. Right? Not not all of them were allowed. Now, let's step into the core flame. Now, understanding the obstacles, understanding the challenges, how do you go about overcoming them? What are the solutions? Now, what's, let's take a step back. Right? What is You have an application which you want to build. What, what does an application architecture consist of? Right? Different modules. 
you have user management, user onboarding, right? Once it gets user registered, user login, author, authenticate, authorization, put to access different modules, right? And the user gets onboarded, he has a profile, he has payment, uh, payment or a wallet enabled, payment, uh, what you call service enabled, or he has a wallet, right? right? To buy a product or to buy, subscribe to a particular application. So these are very basic things, but you start off from those modules and keep adding new modules, which are more functional. And all of these require services, right? Back end, you have so you need to have an authentication service, authorization service, registration service, onboarding service, and you have a visualization layer, right? Here, I guess, put mobile and web, but some of them are interested in not just uh, mobile and web, I want in SMS, I want IVR, I want immersion experience, I want conversation experience, chatbot to be connected to these services. <clears throat> and also some templates, right? There's a template which a customer want to uh, or what you call use use for a specific process, right? And that consists of events. The template consists of multiple events, multiple entities, and entities are tied up with events related to simple things like create, read, update, delete, or more complicated things like notification, workflow approval, and so on. So underneath, you need to have the services layer, the actual classes which need which are built. And the data access layer, the persistent service where the data has to be persisted to a particular data source, right? Or any other external or internal data source or service. Now let's look at from the UI front. So you have the backend very clearly. There are services, there are data, data sources, and you have data management persistent services on the right hand side, and you have service bindings. On the left hand side, an application typically consists of pages. And a desktop views or web views or right, mobile. And each of that particular page will have controls. Right? Typically, it has a label and it has a specific uh, control type. Right? And it, it needs to get an input from somewhere or a user has to input in. Right? It's read only. Right? Or the person has to type it in. So these are some of the variants within the pages and controls. Now, that's on the left hand side. And you have services which provide the data either to Update or update the data within the controls, or take this input and send it to the data sources. So these particular pages, whenever the let's say take a simple form, a login form, the data comes in, you want to send it. You need to have a service uh, on the other side, a login service, which takes this username and password, right, to a service and push it in. Right? That's the request which comes to a login service. Login service goes back to the data so business service, calls the persistent service, gets the username, checks for this particular user if it exists, sends back the response. The response comes back. Right? There is there will be a what you call a, a controller, like page controller, or a UI controller, or framework based controller, which looks at and then moves the user from one page to another page based on the response. Right. Let's take a complicated example, not just login service, but a complicated example. There's a dashboard, which I'm clicking on the menu, and then you get a, you get a send a request to to the services saying that please get the data for let's pour all the customers or what are all the products. Let's say what are all the products. The response comes back, and the response comes back and let's say JSON, and this has to fit in a table. And the table has to be rendered. So, the, so you see the service bindings. Similarly, the UI bindings have to be created with the table and the data. Now let's look into the low-code platforms, right? Uh, now stepping before uh, before we get into no-code, let's look at low-code low platforms. Low-code is more like code generation. Right? What do you need to generate an application which consists of pages, which consists of services, which consists of data services and database schema. So you have a channel, you have application which consists of views and services. A view consists of view identifier, view fields, form or form fields, and view types like CRUD, and services like method and request and response. So underneath you have DevOps, cloud, databases, right? Like, like what you see in the, any typical architecture. The local platform uses this particular metadata to generate code. Once the code is generated, you need to have Maven or some kind of build tool which builds the tools, builds the application, sends it across and deploys it on the cloud. Right? Now, that's low code. Now, let's say we want to go to a no code platform. How, how will this work? Like we discussed, you have modules, you have services, you have templates and events. Right? Now, let, let's go further than persistence. You have analytics, messaging multi-channel services and 
templates which are related to tasks. Right? I, I need to create a particular uh, form and create an application. I need to create an account, let's say, in insurance uh, domain. And I need to I, I have a form which I have to use for a user to fill up the form. I have calendars, right, which I have to show, display when I pick the date and so on. Workflows, content, translators, process automation. Similarly, like we talked about events, like, right? not just CRUD events, not just notifications, alerts, activity monitoring, and external app notifications. <clears throat> now, it's not just a no-code platform. The next requirement is I want to make this more like a software as a service, which I need to provide to the user. So typical features which are there in a software as a service, like module management, subscription management, metering, billing, auditing, calendar management, document management and configuration management. So the customers say, well, it, uh, it looks good, right? Conceptually, I understand how you slowly evolve from application to low code to no code platform. And what are the features and how do you make it service after the service and how customers or users use it. But I want to see this in a specific example. It's too abstract and pages, view, service binding, your binding. It may look good for an architect or a developer to understand, but it looks like very conceptual, very abstract, and not really pragmatic, right? So give me an example and show me how it's going to work. So let's pick insurance vertical. Right? You have modules like quote management, policy creation, self-service, payment processing, claim processing, billing management, operations handling, data management, data reporting, commissions, authentication, authorization, roles management. Now, what does what do they have, what are the integrations which are required? for other the modules which you talked about insurance to work. Okay, what is typical insurance like you want to have auto insurance or life insurance or medical insurance is basically you need to fill up a form, send the information, get, get the test done, and the results have to be provided to the user, to the agent, and the agent has to give back the policy. On the integration, what are the integration, backend integration which are required? One is custom relationship manager, their AI platforms, fraud analysis, geocoding service providers. If it is um, property and casualty, you require fresh hazard services. In any insurance, you see a chat bot on the right hand side. It keeps popping up. You need test messaging service, right? You need cyber risk scores, loss costs, replacement costs, crime reports, right? If it is um, what you call home insurance, and you want to know for that particular area, what is, what is the crime rate, flood hazard metrics, predictive CVT modeling. So these are some of the backend services and integrations which are required. Now, we have all this ready, the integrations, you have the modules, and how do I do this practically? And this is where you have to visualize, you have a business analyst, where you have a process design which needs to be done. You have to sketch the process. And we talked about for each process, there's an input and there's an output. Input is most of most of the time a page or an email or a trigger which event which comes which has data which has to be processed by a particular service. The response comes back and you have the output being rendered or you move to the next next process by some event by an action by by the user. Okay, and for this you need screens. So how do you go, go about designing the screens? The screen designer needs to be there. When you drag and drop, you have a palette and you bring in the controls. You create a page. You create a form. Lay, have a layout and place them properly and you have actions right buttons or, or some action which needs to submit this particular information render this particular screen and what if you have a custom widget i don't like this palette i want to create a widget right you want you have custom widgets i don't like the standard layout let's flow layout or uh, the three by three grid or four by five grid i want custom layout right like the fancy uh ui ux screens like what how unicorn the screens are there, right? I want the custom layout. I want, I want uh, things more uh, what do you call uh, uh, not uh, not not linear, right? More com more complex or not uh, symmetric. I want asymmetric. And similarly, custom dashboards and custom search. Now we have we have the designers. So we have the screens design. We have the backend services. Right? We have the modules which are working. But also, I want guided workflows, right? Not simple integration, but I want a user to, to be taken step by step. For example, to send a SMS, it has to be more like a wizard, right? Or old, old times wizards, but it has to be more like a bubble driven where 
user knows what to do, right? He, he clicks clicks on the particular control, and you see a bubble coming up, right? For SMS integration, how to compose an email, for collaboration tools, for content management, customer service, advertising services, surveys, project management, marketing, schedule, and chat tools. See, this is an next level feature. Or you want to have compliance level uh, features for HIPAA, PCI, DSS, GPDR, WCAG, ADA, FERPA, IRDA, and FEMA. Now, let's say we have all these applications done and you showed you the customer. The customer says, this is great for mobile and web, but I'm not, I'm not just happy with mobile and web. I have IoT data coming from IoT sensors, I have wearable data. People now just uh, heard uh, Facebook has glasses. Please do me Google or some of the other, uh, other companies used to have glasses and watches and right, sending information. And that information has to be composed on the cloud. I want to create a cloud. Uh, Data, what data on the cloud, right? And then process the particular data and create apps around the particular data, right? Like an IoT cloud or wearables cloud, right? Or the conversational experience, they have chatbots configured on Google or the dialogue flow or Amazon Lex or IBM Bluemix Watson, right? Or any other platform, I have one in my own chatbot, but it needs information. I can get the account, account data, I can get the uh, what you call a person's uh, name, I can get the check number. Right? I need to tie this up with my banking services or insurance service. I can get the policy number. I, I want to back and work with the chatbots. It's similarly A and AR, VR, like a property concern, casualty insurance, right? The person is saying, yes, uh, what you call uh, an apartment. It takes a photograph and you have the location intelligence from the mobile. But I want to tie this up with the back end services to provide information to the user. How safe this is this particular area? What are the hazards, previous hazards which have happened? And all the information which is really, which is required for the home insurance or property casualty code to be provided. All the services have to push in that information, right? Crime rate, weather, flood hazards, and what are the problems with this particular building, right? If you have any historical information, and that helps the user to understand, also the agent to give it, to assess and explain the code why this particular code is very high for property casualty insurance. Similarly, PWA desktop. And what do you require for all this whole of this multi-experience development platforms to work? The mesh app service architecture. So let's see what is mesh, mesh service mesh architecture. Right? You have your delegates, you have various front-end frameworks which you talked about, like chatbots, voice platforms, IoT platforms, ER, VR, ER platforms, variables, and each of them will have chatbot frameworks, their own frameworks, interaction frameworks, like voice framework, IoT framework. In the case of VR, you have NLP frameworks. And there are gateways like service mesh gateway, and there are gateways which these frameworks talk to, right? And back end you have services with chatbot. Then you have, if you're using IBM, you'll have Watson services. If you are using Amazon, you'll have Amazon Lex services. If you are using Dialogflow, you'll have Google Cloud services, or your own services which are persistence, analytics, and messaging, and multi-channel, all through going through the service mesh gateway, where the the services can be composed and sent it across to BFF, which is backend service for frontend service, which is a framework, backend for frontend framework. And what are the capabilities of this particular service mesh platform? You can have lifecycle management, you have security, traffic management, policy management, multi-tenancy, extensibility, and multi-cluster operations. I have a small demo, so I'll just uh, share that. for healthcare and insurance. So
questions. Uh, you can actually register. I hope you are able to see the video. Main password. I already registered, so I'm going to log in. So you can update your profile. And you can choose the subscription. Subscription has a payment type, a credit, debit, PayPal, and banking. And subscription types of bronze, silver, gold, and cost. So the gold subscription cover everything like having health, life, auto, clients, policy management, payment processing, billing, self service portal, and the cost is $72. If you look at bronze, uh, it only has claims for other types of insurance like health, life, auto, and home, and the cost is for Silver uh, has health, life, auto, and home, and has claims processing and policy money. Cost is $62. And custom is where you can have develop your own services and you can have uh, portals for health, life, and auto, and home, and integrate those services for claims processing or policy management or payment processing or billing and services and service portal. And they can have in-house modules built also, which can be integrated for the other modules. The cost is around 452. So you can configure the portals. Uh, each portal will have a layout. Like if you're logged into manager, you have capabilities to access menus, like assign, profile, and task. Agent is assigned and profile. As assigned profile and client. And we have server layouts where you can choose the same profile, same profile crime, and same profile crime and fed reports. So, as the org admin, I can create users and send them email to get started. And they have different roles you have know, customer, you have know, agent manager, and you have agent and surveyor and they have names and they all belong to my organization. And I am the organization admin who manages the users in terms of the roles, the layouts, and also the data sources, right? And uh, let's say the surveyor portal requires the data sources for crime data or threat hazard data, or uh, likely for life insurance and mortality rate. Right? I could uh, include, but we can have data services, service services configured for uh, life mortality or uh, apartment uh, cause or uh, loss cause or replacement cause for assets and so on. And also, you can pay for the subscription. In this case, let's say you have selected debit card, you can pay for the brand subscription or credit card or PayPal or net banking. So now let's look at the other side of the platform. Right? You have seen the org admin. Now you are looking at uh, the customer portal. So here again you can register, and uh, the org admin sends the email. You can click on the register. You have the organization, the role setup. You can set in the password. So the customer, customer portal has the health insurance, the premium, the policy coverage, right? and the nominee, and the premium per year, the home insurance, and the number of claims which are processed. And also, you can update your own uh, profile. Right? And uh, you can also pay right, through debit card, the premiums, credit card, right? PayPal, and net banking. And that was the customer portal. So let's look at uh, manager. So in the in the manager portal, right, you have um, the what you call the various tasks. You can manage your own uh, profile, Thomas Smith, and you can also have uh, what you call agent and surveyor, right? And you can assign G Smith who is an agent, and you can say. And you can select different assessment or approve or create policy. So after creating, you can look at 
the tasks which are assigned right? and they can check who has the various tasks assigned. Let's look at uh, the agent portal. So, agent portal again, you can manage the profile. And uh, here you see the tasks which are assigned for the agent. Now let's look at surveyor. The surveyor got the task assigned. You have uh, crime reports. If you go back to the data sources, what you configured, you configured uniform crime reporting, which is the data source here. And you can pretty much select So when you go to flood hazard reports, you have different uh, flood hazard data, and you can search for the zip code. So that was the uh, uh, demo for NoCo platform for healthcare and insurance. Uh, So I'm going to go back to the presentation now. So that was the presentation um, of the demo based on Python, Zango, and MySQL and using um, HTML5. Now, many of you will have this question in mind, Bhagwan, it's a great demo. But how do I get started? Right? What, what are the basic things I need to look at? Right? So for anybody, whether you're a developer or from insurance or healthcare or staff, right? what are your scalability requirements? What is your plan to include new uses cases? Right? You have this basic functionality, but what else you can add? Right? Create a small roadmap kind of thing, and you can jot down the features. Right? What is your current and future user base? Is scaling horizontally an option? You plan to deploy your applications on the cloud or you have announced what is your current technology stack, right? What are your future requirements and what technology stack will help you to get to there? What are your compliance requirements? Is your platform microservices based? Right? Does your platform support other REST services or uh, you have to integrate with any other external REST services or any other external data sources? What is your budget? What is the pricing model supported by the no-code platform? Right. These are some of the things which you need to first jot down and create a plan if you, are, if you want to get started. Sorry to interrupt, Bhagavan. I think we crossed 30 minutes, so please find it up soon. I just have two more slides. Okay. Can you finish it soon? Yeah. The next question you have in mind is, I have an existing local platform. right? It works great. I just want to make it no code platform. So how do I make it? So first candidate for assessment, where you want to move them into no-code platform, are the services. Second is forms, pages. Then you look at the database schema, and then the whole integration services or the deployment on the, or, 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 the, or the cloud. Right? So you look at all these components and identify what are the variants which I can configure from the UI, like an admin. right? Similarly, as a user or application developer, right? how do I configure and make this work either runtime or design time? Right, or um, deployment time. The next question you have in mind is, I already have a microservices-based platform, right, for, for insurance or based in Indian, by based in India or Europe. I have a microservices platform which provides me all the data about what you're talking about, crime rate or anything for property casualty or life insurance, actual services or healthcare, providing all the data. But I want to make this no code, right, to make it more, uh, more like an insurance platform. So it's, it's more like a methodology where you start looking at universal connectors, right? How do you go about connecting to any possible data source, any possible data service? It's not just REST, right? It can be old SOAP, it can be JAX, 
jacks uh, what you call uh, jacks uh, jacks are right or jacks messaging it can be any other protocol but you should have capability to connect and provide those connectors and as you know these are all external data sources right data sources not just with which are not in your control you don't even know the database schema right sometimes they are not even exposing the services they may just provide you the data sources to pick the data right and also you have to provide uh, you have to worry about authentication for each of these they will provide you the credentials how to connect to using universal connector to a particular service a particular data source and there is authorization you can only access this particular uh, this particular part of the database schema this particular part of a uh, service not all the methods even within the method the data which comes in which will be partial and you have and you, and you have access control rate limits request headers which you need to pass on pagination of data right sometimes the services you keep sending the information as you keep saying one two three four as like like you see in your ui at the bottom you have one two three four pagination similarly the rest services will have a parameter saying that do i want the limit of reserves which will be sent will be 10 or 20 i want the fourth fourth row which fourth the fourth set of each consisting of 10. it similarly use it defined variables and so on but you need to capture all this first and then make them configurable through a no code platform then then you should you should be able to realize the next step where you want to take this and bind them to the ui services or create a multi multi experience development platform which needs to bind the immersive experiences or conversational experiences or iot or variables to the services which is coming in the other last question is who else is doing right i just added this there are many many people many uh, companies which are focusing on chatbots emails web and connectors right like we talked about the universal connectors some of them are already available like automate.io like zapier if triple t trade.io right parabola parabola right flow block spring action desk right and that's a commercial friend how about open source app symbol convertigo zoget mendix integi sartcon vision x the last thing is so you, ha you have this roadmap back on what is what is next right you have the no code automation platform so what's next the next level which you are looking at is not just to stop at the no code uh, platform for domain specific the idea is to evolve this for no code ai ml evolve this for something like open ai or bert where you have transformers it have make it capable of, of presenting explaining explainable ai features it's not just taking a decision it's not just having a services for what you call uh, decision making or classification or supervised learning or unsupervised learning but also explain some of the rational decisions which are required for a person who is taking this particular data, taking particular data to understand why this particular decision is made the classic example is uh, there's a customer who's looking for insurance code they look at the various uh, plans and his uh, information look at the demographic present a code possible options for code let's say auto insurance for the family they provide different packages as a customer i like i would like to know why package one is good versus package two why was the decision made made is just the cost or some other something else which is happening behind which could be explainable to the customer similarly the agent needs to know in the internals right why was this decision made right? let's say some actual actual sense data which presents saying that based on his health and so on, his quote is very high for the health insurance. You should be able to explain, the agent should be able to explain to the customer saying this is the reason why your health insurance is very high. Right? So that's the next level which we want to reach. So thank, thank you. If you have any questions, so it's a good time.